एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम know that similar substrates under different set of conditions can give altogether different products following a different reaction mechanisms that is the beauty of reaction mechanisms let's see how it happens hi myself dr manika and in this lecture we will be talking about reaction mechanisms in organic chemistry reaction mechanisms are nothing new it is the way in which we explain how the reaction is happening between the two or more than two sets of the reactants for more information on such topics such as stereochemistry reaction mechanisms you can follow our book by s chan publishing the link to which is given in the description box below so whenever we talk about reaction mechanisms we must understand what a reaction is from the primitive classes or from the school we have been taught that whenever two things or a thing reacts under a certain set of the condition and something new is formed reaction is said to occur so some change has to occur whenever we think about a reaction and how that reaction happens is explained by the mechanism it follows so in this lecture we will be talking about a few set of the reactions uh, focusing on substitutions addition and elimination reactions so reactions happen throughout our day to day life it's not that you have to go to a lab and perform a reaction and then also, then only you will be able to demonstrate it to yourself that yes a reaction is happening reaction happens whenever you go to a park and see the swing uh, having a lot of rust on it after a few days of the rain so that is happening due to the rusting whenever you bake cookies or cake a baking is also a sort of reaction between uh, your baking powder and all the reage all the all the so whenever you do some sort of the baking then also neutralization reaction happens between the acidic and alkaline reagents whenever we wash clothes use batteries in our equipments the process of photosynthesis by which plants make their food the digestion which happens every time in our body even the smallest things such as transport of oxygen through our body all are happening through some sort of the chemical change or the other the uh, dosas or idlis which we eat are happening through the process of fermentation is also a kind of chemical change so obviously they can be called as chemical reactions in chemistry preferably in organic the reactions can be classified into a few sets of uh, mechanisms which they follow uh, they can vary from addition when something is added to the molecule substitution when something is replaced by something else elimination when something is altogether eliminated to form a new functional group or something new is getting formed by elimination of some atom or the group cyclization when already aliphatic chain which is there or or an already existing open chain in presence of certain set of the conditions undergo cyclization ring opening the same cyclic ring can get open back again to the open chain form under the opposite set of the reaction condition and oxidation usually uh, usually happens with the reagents sometimes it happens on its own also for example if you keep a bottle of aniline in the lab and see it after a few months you you'll see it has turned all brown due to the oxidation it happens with the phenolic compounds also so reactions are happening all around you and to explain how they have how they happen we will uh, briefly discuss about them in this lecture so most of the reactions in organic chemistry are explained by certain sorts of electronic displacements and these electronic displacement effects are of four major types if you want to understand the basic mechanisms in any set of the organic reactions you must have the knowledge of these electronic displacement effects because it is these effects which govern the flow of electrons or the radicals in a reaction system resonance effect hyper conjugation electromagnetic effect and inductive effect some of them are permanent effect and some of them are induced effects so for example inductive effect as the name is suggesting it's an induced effect 
So this is induced in the molecule whenever there is some difference in the polarity. For example, if for example in a molecule of chloropropane, there is an inductive effect or there is a permanent polarization because chlorine is more electronegative to the carbon to which is attached and this polarity is propagated throughout the chain. So it is induced throughout the chain. So this is a known as inductive effect which is induced throughout the molecule due to the presence of some sort of polarity in the molecule. So if the group attached or atom attached in the molecule is electron withdrawing, you can call it as a minus I effect or if it is electron donating, it may be called as the plus I effect. The next effect, uh, we can take any one of them. So for example, if we talk about electromeric effect, electromeric effect is a totally a temporary effect. It happens in the molecule whenever it is under the presence of certain reagent. For example, if you take a molecule of acetone and react it under some basic conditions. So what will happen? The base will try to abstract the alpha hydrogen from the molecule. So when it will try to abstract the alpha hydrogen from the molecule or it will try to induce some polarity in the molecule. Let me take a better example. So instead of OH, so to explain the electromeric effect, let's take the acetone. When it is present in the presence of CN negative cyanide as a nucleophile, there is some polarity in the molecule. Now this polarization in the molecule is happening because there is some nucleophile present around it. And because of the presence of nucleophile only, the polarization of the C double bond O is happening towards oxygen. So this is a kind of electromeric effect. So whenever the transfer or the polarization is towards the more electronegative atom, it is a minus I effect. And if it is happening from carbon to carbon, such as it happens in the case of alkenes when they undergo addition reaction, that is a sort of plus E effect. The third type of electronic displacement effect which is most widely encountered is resonance effect. Resonance is a kind of stabilization effect. For example, if we talk about the structure of benzene, we all know that it can be written. So for example, if we talk about the structure of benzene, we all know that it can be written in two canonical forms. Out of these two canonical forms, the benzene exists in the hybrid structure. Where the pi electron cloud is shown by the presence of a ring. So it is this hybrid form which is known to be the most stable form. Okay, because the two forms are stabilized via resonance. The six pi electrons are moving through out the molecule. The resonance effect also explains the stabilization of phenoxide ion amines. So whenever a molecule has certain group which is providing electrons to stabilize the molecule through the resonance, it is kind of showing plus R or plus M. Resonance effect was earlier called as mesomeric effect. It was later on coined as the resonance effect. So all the groups which will provide electrons to the system, they will be known to show a plus R effect. And the groups which will withdraw the electrons from the system, such as NO2, CN, carboxylic, sulfonic, they will be known to produce minus R or minus M effect. The last one is hyperconjugation. Hyperconjugation is similar to resonance, but it is a kind of no bond resonance. It is responsible for stabilization of free radicals and in certain cases, uh, sigma bonds also, which helps in stabilization of these free radicals or uh, pi bonds via no bond resonance. I'll just show the hyperconjugation with a free radical. So if you look at the propyl free radical, the stabilization in the radical happens through the presence of alpha hydrogen atoms. So here it has six alpha hydrogen atoms. So I'm showing the stabilization by one of the alpha hydrogen atoms. So here you can see that the methyl group which is next to the radical carbon is helping in the stabilization of the radical through no bond resonance. Why no bond resonance? Because actually there is no double, uh, no real double bond between these two carbon atoms. It is just this hy alpha hydrogen atoms are 
actually helping to stabilize the radical by their presence. So more is the number of alpha hydrogen atom, more will be the stabilization of the free radicals. So almost all the organic reactions involve some sort of the electronic displacements or the other which help in the stabilization of the reactive intermediates which exist in organic chemistry be it carbocations, carbon ions or free radicals or carbenes. Now let's look at the substitution reaction. Substitution reactions can be free radical, nucleophilic or electrophilic. Free radicals usually occur in the formation of alkyl halides and uh, nucleophilic substitutions occur in alkyl halides, alcohols, ethers, carboxylic acids, derivative and electrophilic substitutions happens in the aromatic compounds and their derivatives. So free radical substitution follows this kind of mechanism with three steps initiation, propagation and termination for which involves the formation of the alkyl free radical combining with each other to give you the uh, final product or combining with the uh, halide free radical to give the required product which is alkyl halide. Nucleophilic substitution, uh, one important thing, the free radical reactions usually occur in the presence of uh, light or heat. Nucleophilic substitution reactions uh, usually occur or most frequently occur in alkyl halides whenever they undergo reaction with a nucleophile, the leaving group leaves and a nucleophile is substituted. So usually Rx is to be taken as the substrate with the nucleophile coming its way and leaving group going away. Now this can happen in two ways, either it can occur in a concerted way that is from the side the nucleophile is coming and from the other side the leaving group is going all in single step. So that is some sort of concerted mechanism. But if it happens stepwise then it is a non-concerted mechanism. So SN1 mechanism of nucleophilic substitution is a kind of non-concerted mechanism because it is stepwise. It only depends upon the structure of the rate of the reaction depends upon the substrate not on the uh, incoming nucleophile. So this is first order where carbocation is the intermediate and is happening in the two steps. The intermediate over here is carbocation. So more are the number of the groups attached to the carbocation center, the more will be the stability and hence SN1 will be favored by the tertiary substrate as compared to the primary and the secondary substrates. SN2 on the other hand is a second order mechanism. The rate of the reaction depends on both the substrate and the nucleophile and it happens in a single concerted mechanism which involves the formation of a transition state. Here you can see that from the side the nucleophile is coming and from the other side the leaving group is leaving. So obviously SN2 will involve inversion of configuration. So if you are starting with an R substrate you will end up with an S substrate whereas in SN1 since carbocation was the intermediate, the nucleophile could come from either sides. So you could have the product with inversion as well as the uh, retention or you could also have a racemic mixture. So SN2 mechanism gives the similar product as the SN1 but the mechanism is different and since it involves a transition state and if it is crowded, it will not be a, a favorable way of going with the reaction. So therefore SN2 is favored with the primary substrates more as compared to the secondary and the tertiary substrates. So this is how the SN2 reactivity varies with the different kinds of substrates. The third kind of the substitution reaction occur in the acyl compounds where Y which is acting as the leaving group can leave in the presence of a nucleophile where the intermediate is a tetrahedral intermediate and the product is a substituted acyl compound. The most common reaction of this kind you do in the way we do in the chemistry lab which is benzoylation reaction between benzoyl chloride and aniline. So benzoyl chloride is the substrate and aniline is the nucleophile and it attacks the carbon center and the product is benzenolide or N-phenyl benzamide. The most reactive amongst the acyl compounds are acid chlorides because here chloride is the leaving group which is the conjugate base of a very strong acid HCl. So chloride is the best leaving group and as you go towards the amide this is the poor leaving group because it is mostly basic. So the substitution reaction will be most favorable with the acid chlorides but they are violent also in certain cases. 
Now the next type of the substitution reactions after free radical and nucleophilic or electrophilic substitutions. This set of the reactions which have already discussed in one of our lectures on aromatic substitution or aromaticity. For more detail you can check on to our lecture regarding this. So unlike alkenes, benzene undergoes substitution reactions. In the beginning, I told you that benzene shows resonance. So the six pi electrons are not localized. So benzene, if it will react with, uh, say, any, electro, any electrophile, it will not undergo addition reaction. It will undergo substitution. Why substitution? Because here the mechanism is the formation of involves the formation of an arenium ion or a stabilized sigma complex followed by the removal of the hydrogen atom and the product is formed with the required substituent. The most common electrophilic aromatic substitutions encountered are substitution of halides, nitro group, nitration, sulfonic group, sulfonation, then Friedel-Craft alkylation and Friedel-Craft acylations are common electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions which are encountered in the organic chemistry. Here you can see that the formation of arenium ion is a favorable step and hence we get the required product. Now the next set of the reactions are elimination reactions. Elimination reactions often compete with the substitution reactions in aliphatic compounds because both of them involve similar type of the substrates. In elimination, the fragments of the molecule are removed resulting in the multiple bonds. So again, there can be two sorts of the mechanism because substrates are different and the reaction conditions can be different. Uh, E1 mechanism is followed where it is unimolecular and E2 for the bimolecular set of the mechanisms. Usually strong bases favor E2 mechanism and weak bases favor E1 mechanism. Here you can see that with a strong base we are getting we are getting the product and with the weak base also we are getting the similar product but the mechanism is altogether different. Here it is E2. In E2 mechanism there is a single step concerted mechanism as it happened in the case of SN2 that is both the hydrogen and Br are leaving at the similar similar time. So first in the first step the base will abstract the proton and simultaneously the Br will leave. So but uh, always in the case of elimination the hydrogen leaves from the carbon which is uh, which is less substituted. So in order to get you the more stable alkene this is known as the Sedzef rule. Similarly you can see here also the similar product is obtained governed by the Sedzef rule. So usually the both the steps of the both the mechanisms of the elimination can occur depending upon the reaction conditions. The more substituted alkyl halides favor both E1 and E2 mechanism but if the base is the strong one E2 is favored and if the base is mild E1 is favored. And as I just said that the major product of the elimination is always ZZF that is the hydrogen is eliminated from that beta carbon which has least number of hydrogen. See in this case if hydrogen is eliminated from beta 1 you will get 1 propene but if hydrogen is eliminated from third carbon atom you get butene. So this one is the more stable product and it's also known as the ZZF product. In the beginning I asked a question that you think that similar substrates under different set of the conditions could give different products? Yes, it is possible because they will follow altogether different mechanism. So here in the first reaction you can see that when uh, this primary substrate is reacted with the methoxide ion which is a strong base, the possibility is obviously the substitution reaction but which mechanism to follow? Obviously SN2 because it is a primary substrate. So the product which can be possible is obviously there can be some formation of the E2 product also elimination product but, but this is that is less favored because with oxide ion is a good nucleophile right. So it favors the SN2 pathway. In the second case here you can see it's a tertiary substrate. So the possibility of E2 is completely ruled out 
and SN2 is obviously ruled out because it's a tertiary substrate. So here we have the competition between E1 and SN1. So which out of the two occurs since you have the solvent only over here. So preferably the product should be the SN1 product. So in this case, you can see that there is just solvent. There is no nucleophile. So there is no chance of uh, uh, SN2 or E2. SN2 is obviously not possible because it's a tertiary substrate. So here the product will be substitution followed by SN1 mechanism. So here this will be the product, this one follows SN2 and this one follows SN1. Obviously minor product will be of E2 and E1. With this we come to an end of part 1 of our reaction mechanism lecture. We will be discussing more about the reactions in the second part of this lecture. For more information on such topics such as stereochemistry, reaction mechanisms, you can follow our book by S. Chand Publishing, the link to which is given in the description box below. Please keep liking, subscribing and sharing our channel for more such videos. Thank you. All rights resolved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.